Hello again, this is Ben Hitchcock Cross talking to you today. I'm in uh, the clouds, as I say, uh, sort of at the alternative location here. Um, yeah, it's a snow day. Uh, I think we're on two inches right now. The roads seem perfectly fine. Uh, we'll see what the story is. Uh, here, apparently, there's supposed to be seven inches. I understand uh, in Milwaukee, it's only three. But of course, it is a, a snow day. So that means no school today. Um, what a wonderful sort of, uh, you know, reminiscent of a feudal holiday there, um, where anything goes and you just don't know what, uh, what or if it's going to happen. I mean, now, uh, I think there's a lot more tendency to call it the night before, which kind of ruins, I think the whole magic of snow day, but, um, yeah, it's pretty great. This is also here, there was nothing, no snow on the ground at all here up until uh, the beginning of the week, and there was you know, a light dusting I might, at most. Uh, so this will be pretty exciting for all of the winter sports enthusiasts, for example. Um, other big news up here, we have um, Patches the dog is back in the fray. She is, let's say... Uh, shocking behavior from her she's extremely timid she's been gone for two and a half months off and on um i've seen her i mean we go hang out a bunch but she's generally at somebody else's house at the moment helping out there and um yeah it's just shocking because she has literally abused lala for ages especially when they were i mean we've separated them to keep patches from hurting lala and I didn't say hurt, I said hurt. And um, she's an aggressive kind of, passive aggressive punk sometimes. And it's shocking to see her be so um, demure. And Lala is 1000% claiming my, um, that she's my dog and that she's got uh, authority coming from me, uh, which is shocking. I've seen Lala kind of push around. I mean, she's always in, there's just some role reversals here, which I did not expect. Um, usually Patches comes into a situation and starts harassing everybody <laughs> until she does what they say. So I, I just don't, I'm shocked, but uh, I assume it'll change at some point. But here we are. Even I think Raven <clears throat> is a little surprised. So that is the dog gossip. <laughs> okay. Um, we are mostly trying to answer the question of where the hell has Ben been? And uh, Ben has been conducting some depositions. Um, I had two on Friday, and those are MPS depositions. Chris Reardon ones flowing along the same lines as Bob Peterson. We still don't have any decision on uh, what's to become of Bob Peterson and when we're going to get some real responses there. Um, but I can sort of fill you in for all the MPS watchers. Now, <clears throat> I don't know because nobody mentioned it in the comments, but did nobody get the concept that Bob Peterson was one of my mother's best friends and that I've known him for, you know, 40 odd years? <laughs> I, I, it, uh, it, uh, I didn't get that sense again. Uh, I've certainly let that out. That's certainly come out hero of mine. Um, a lot of things uh, along those lines, but I, I again, I, I saw nothing on that. Um, we did have that explosive finish, so that was something. And um, part of here, what I wanted to, I'm going to bridge into why again MPS is so important um, here, because um, besides being the largest school district in the state of Wisconsin and a, a um, multi-billion, more than at least one billion, I think it's one point two billion dollar operation. Um, it, uh, exemplifies, I think in every way, uh, the urban school district in your area, um, USA. Uh, so that, that's part of it. It's prototypical. Um, but also, um, you know, we have our lens on where we were, uh, from measuring from the eighties going back to today. And I think that, you know, anybody from Milwaukee, anybody who watches MPS will know, and that's what we're trying to compare here. And that's another thing on the, um, 
in the 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 theme of what we're trying to do here on this channel is to just compare you know what the social services what the governmental services what the the concept of the bureaucratic concept of what they were there for uh, in the 80s as opposed to today so we're with that is a lot of what i think we're trying to compare and contrast and when you see the performance of bob peterson i mean a lot of people said hey this is the, one of the things that you get uh when you have a teacher who uh is uh becoming a board member you know just for sinecure purposes or they put him in there for and i i don't know that that's true i don't know that bob peterson was going in there only for corrupt motives at all i i to me that's always i assumed the absolutely the opposite i think um everything that i've known about his trajectory um uh, leave me to believe that he was going in there for all of the right reasons okay i do not know but that's my uh that's my understanding okay so um but, and there are other times when I've said this here on this channel, I do believe, and I've in fact coined this phrase here, uh, which apparently only I use, but hey, what the heck, it's, I call it the Bob Peterson effect, okay? And um, the what I mean by that is somebody with the best of intentions who gets into the corporate board environment and then is told by attorneys and what else um, how they need to operate and what they what's in the best um, interests of the district, the service, the you know whatever the heck, the, whatever they're elected to. <clears throat> and from there, and we lay aside you know any affiliations with the with the union or any other thing like that whatever goals that they came in there with almost instantaneously get transferred, subsumed, and subverted by um, management. And I think the sort of the attorney um, deep state bureaucracy, I guess for lack of a better word to understand of, you know, these are the class of attorneys that professionally work for school boards. Right. And that, you know, we've explained and explained a lot on this channel how those groups operate and are funded by <clears throat> the school districts. OK. And we point out that um, to the extent that uh, any of these school districts are arguing in bad faith, um, you know, legal arguments in bad faith and delaying and um, for the purpose of exhausting um people especially people who have rightful um de you know claims are um sound that is ultimately stealing money from the children you know we've made that case plenty of times and i think that's a fair thing to say so um that is what we have we've got um two on so on friday we've got uh marva herndon Marva Herndon, who is the current president of the Milwaukee uh, Public Schools. They, you know, it's called the Board of Directors of Milwaukee Public Schools who control Milwaukee Public Schools, okay? Um, but whatever. It's all a corporate name and they have a secret name and whatever and whatever and whatever. Okay. So she's the president. She is the um, successor to Bob Peterson as president, was uh, co-board members with Peterson, has been re-elected twice. Um, she was deposed for about three hours from nine to almost precisely 12, uh, pretty good calendar management. And then uh, Aisha Carr, who um, is, I would say, I guess head of her own faction. I don't know what to put that, but uh, certainly a board director who is frequently at odds with the Bob Peterson Herndon um, other fa faction like that. Whoever's allied with those guys, I would say it's fair to say that she's not aligned with Bob Peterson or um, Marva Herndon. Okay, so that's we have. And she's from like 12 to 5, something like that. So um, we have that uh, t 
testimony and we're gonna get that all queued up for you guys i assume could all have no sound or who knows what other tragedies could happen um so that is uh that was my friday um pretty exhausting and that's for sure cardinal rule of depositions for me is to stop drinking coffee afternoon um failed on that uh, <laughs> um i my personal observations on this were a couple of things i try to go into a deposition uh, with sort of three layers of questions um, that I would like to, you know, layers of things in mind. And number one is sort of what is it that I would, that we need, you know, the crucial elements of the case, what would we like to know, and what is it that they do not want us to know, okay? One more time, what do I need? What are the elements of the case? Okay, obviously you need those, that seems to be self-evident. Then there's things that I'd like to know, and it doesn't mean me, of course, that means these are, this is discovery, is the whole concept here, is that we are trying to find out um, within the bounds of um, proportionality that, uh, that we're trying to find out what's going on here. So um, there is a lot of times, these are process-based questions, process-based things, meaning how does, for example, a school board, how does it vote behind closed doors? How do they act? Do they always, do they ever talk to each other on this or that occasion or whatever else, okay? So on that kind of thing, just for example, we would get frequently kind of the kind of answers and I would say, you know, do you ever talk to somebody, it's to three other board members at a time? And they would say, well, you can't talk to, the rules say you can only talk to one, you know, one other person at a time. That's just how it goes. And, you know, that's not really an answer to the question there. Um, that is an answer to uh, what the rule is, but that doesn't say whether or not they do that. Getting off on, back onto the track there, the, the question um, that we're trying to focus on ultimately is, the process, how are things done, okay? Is it, um, sometimes the process can be all about, um, you know, crucial to the case, which it is here. Sometimes, for example, in sexual harassment cases, the question is, did management do enough or what did they do? Was that sufficient, okay? And so, um, you know, I think we've got that, um, in other cases here, the question is, hey, um, co-worker who's not, you know, the manager or the, the owner sexually harasses, assaults, you name it, an a co-worker, okay? The employer is not automatically liable unless and until um, you can show that the, the um, management knew or approved of those activities. And there's a couple of ways to show that. Um, but again, if they go and there's a serious sexual assault, the police are involved, things like that, and they're doing a one day thing. And then even tiny little thing happens, they've got a real big problem. So that's, um, you know, that, that's when the process based thing can be uh, part of the, you know, going back to the elements here. Uh, but then the third thing is what is it that they do not want you to know? Okay. And that can work two ways. And it's not necessarily to go out there and say, hey, we're trying to get leverage to, you know, get them. Um, but one of the reasons that you want to know that is because you want to know where they don't want to go. And you can use that for a couple of reasons, either to avoid that um, if the, you know, uh, especially if they're cooperating or to make the, the them you want a specific answer to a specific question if you bring things that they don't necessarily want to talk about into that line of questioning they can start evading there <clears throat> and if you keep those kind of questions out or that subject area out or say hey we're not talking about that then it's sometimes easier to get that uh, a, a better answer and absolutely there are things that they don't want you to know and um you know you need to know whether or not um you don't bring out facts to embarrass anybody. 
You don't bring out, uh, discover things to embarrass people. You don't put things in lawsuits for the purpose of embarrassing people. But because somebody is embarrassed is not a barrier to filing something in, in a, uh, a lawsuit. To defend yourself, it's because somebody is embarrassed is not to uh, accuse somebody of a crime. Those are not good. That's not a justifiable reason. You see the difference there? All right. So, um, I would say more than anything else that I was surprised at was how freely I feel that both directors um, admitted that they were not really managing and directing the school district. And, you know, it's a large organization, and there's nine of them, but that's the whole purpose. There's whatever, seven, or who knows. The purpose is for them to have some kind of oversight of what's going on. And um, for just either the rules that they set themselves for what they said they were going to do, or the, you know, what they promised constituents that they would be doing, um... And I think that came out too. There was a lot of talk about, hey, you're talking with, um, you know, the public. Shouldn't you be telling the public about this? Or shouldn't you be telling the public about that? Or you discovered this problem? Or so what was your response? And they're like, it's not my job, it's somebody else's. And we're like, but isn't that precisely your job? I mean, what else, what else is there? Um, so I, I think there's um, that whole lack of a better word, um, attitude is, um, that, that was what stuck out, stood out to me the most about Friday. Now, Monday, we were supposed to, um, depose Jackie Mann and, uh, Dr. Jackie Mann is the clerk and, um, I think chief of board governance or, uh, there's two roles in there. One is the officer role, and the other one is the role, I believe, that uh, is the head of the board's um, staff. Okay, so it's like chief of staff to board and then clerk. And, right, clerk is a position that's different than secretary or something like that, internal secretary of a board. A clerk is somebody whose official role is to, by any by other, anything else, is to receive things. Right, because the board president, who knows where the heck they are or what they're doing, and they may be whatever. So frequently, you're going to have somebody who's a clerk whose job it is to take and give, and you know that that's the official conduit. That I would say is what that is. So that person there is an officer of the um, school board. It's a, the the clerk is also named in several statutes that what the you know they have to have one. So forth. okay, so um, she was noticed, um, and by the way, uh, there's a lot of shenanigans here. I mean, these guys were noticed back in March. I mean, there's a lot of shenanigans. Um, particularly one of which was, so in, we had been trying to um, depose these people since March, uh, and we sent notices to them, and they just, you know, I said, if you don't have the date, if this doesn't work for you, let us know what does. And then they send an email saying, this doesn't work for us, and then not respond. And then they'd say, you send us dates. And then they'd send an email saying, well, if you don't send us dates, then, you know, we, like, you know, just like regular, like it's kindergarten, but okay. So, um, and of course I'm paraphrasing there, but I want to be clear. Um, I didn't feel that that was very ingenuous at that time. Okay. So uh, then in October, I sent out another round and said, like, this is the date uh, again. Yeah. So I was told and I called up the other side at least three or four times and said, um, told that there was communications uh, with them and that they were waiting for them to get back or that they had gotten back or whatever. So we had set dates. And it was then incumbent, finally, after seven months, they were agreed to get back to us, but then didn't. And I must have called the opposing counsel three times on this. I would send them emails, I think, every day for a couple of weeks. You know, what What are we talking, what emails, uh, what depositions, what are we talking about, what, you know, like that. Um, which I didn't find... Uh, 
very helpful at that time and certainly didn't find it very helpful later. I, uh, one of the witnesses told us that they did not receive uh, any information about uh, the deposition until I then did a third round of notices for December or uh, January, whatever, for Friday. And I don't know, I don't know why they pre would decided that this was the one they were, oh, because we had a big conference with the judge uh, about the walking out thing. So that might have had something to do with it. I don't know. Um, but they then showed up there. Oh, and I threatened to default on them uh, at, during that meeting with the judge if they didn't show up. And then I went out and promptly noticed them. So um, that is, I think, where we were at with the, 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 uh, that at that time. And come to find out from that witness there that um, nobody apparently had uh, talked to them about the actual date until December. Um, ever. They were given some notice of that the thing had happened in October, but nobody had asked that person for any dates at all until December, um, which to my mind made it seem like the opposing counsel had told me that uh, they had communicated with this uh, with their client and uh, but in fact had not. Um, so that I found to be pretty troubling and I think you can see that on there, but that's um, that is how that one went. Um, now, <laughs> God, we're in 21 minutes, but thanks. Anybody who's possibly watching me, uh, a weirdo in his, um, I don't know, farmhouse, what, do you, what are we calling this? Uh, talking to himself or possibly one other person here. So um, thanks for helping me out if you're still with me. So Monday morning, we're all noticed, ready to go. At this hearing with the judge, they said that they had tried to get a hold of this person but couldn't do it. This person was on leave. They had told me that months ago, and you know, let this person, the, the Jackie man, is on leave. Whatever she's doing, it really doesn't. I don't need to comment on it or don't really care. Um, I do know that them being her employer, they better know where the heck she is and better know how to get a hold of her. And it's totally incumbent on them. So, um, there's no doubt about, there's just no question. Now, if she was some other, um, if she wasn't an officer, then that might be a different thing, but you can't really have the president of the company, you know, the treasurer hide out and say, we can't get a hold of them. So that, that's essentially, uh, what's going on. I don't know that she's hiding out. I do know that they're saying that, uh, they can't get a hold of her and, um, you know, maybe they want to go where they keep sending the paychecks to, I, you know, for example. So, um, oh, maybe call her on the cell phone that they've been calling her on for, you know, who knows. But, um, okay. Jackie Mann watches out there. Uh, have you seen her? <laughs> So, uh, it's Monday morning, it's nine o'clock, we're all sitting there. Now keep in mind, we've got videographer uh, being there, we've got myself, we've got the client, uh, I'm sure Deb Keither is ready to go, we've got a court reporter. Uh, so that's five people there um, who all got there. I'm sure I prepped my whole week for that. Uh, nine o'clock, nobody shows. 9.05, uh, my paralegal comes in five okay um but we were all excited and then nothing 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 um the chris reardon of von Briesen did not come he sent ryan maloney his um i'm gonna say junior attorney for lack of a better word i don't know what you know uh assistant is not the right word at all um but they work on cases particularly these mps cases together um that is a common format in these larger firms as we've discussed before so um maloney shows up probably eight forty-five, and um we're sitting there i go start getting some work done at about nine fifteen. at about nine thirty, i go up there and i say hey ryan um so the, you have to have a conference if you're going to do a discovery thing. And if we're going to default on them and say that they need to be a default for this person not showing up, then uh, to their deposition, then we need to do that. Uh, you know, we have a conference about it. 
So I go upstairs, court reporters up there, um, you know, clients up there, everybody's sitting there waiting. And um, I say, Ryan, is there any reason um, why you don't think we should default? And he says, well, yeah, we told you that we couldn't get a hold of her. So we didn't get a hold of her. And so, and I'm like, well, what are we all sitting here doing now? And he said um, something along the lines of, um, you know, hey, um, I want to, um, we were not able to get a hold of her. We are here just because we assumed you might get a hold of her. And so we had to protect our client. So we're here. And so then we had some questions about why didn't you sit here? Why are you sitting there smirking and not telling us this, uh, 45 minutes ago, uh, when we all got here. So, um, I sure believe we've got that recorded. Um, I think we had to get that on the record, uh, some observations about that uh, behavior there. So um, that was what we're dealing with here. So that's another day in the life, uh, MPS depositions uh, story. Hey, I, if this is the worst recording you've ever heard, let me know. Um, but um, you know, we, we, we felt like we needed for our periodical credibility, needing to get something out. So, um, that is our gossip. I hope you're up to date. Stick with us. We'll keep you informed.